Hi guys! I got new paintbrushes! Why is there a hair? So last week we took the G4 Littlest Pet Shop Angelfish that looked horrifying and changed it into a beautiful brand new design that looked like a marine fish. Today we are going to be converting another Littlest Pet Shop from the fourth generation into a custom. This is a brand new series of mine where I'm taking bases that Littlest Pet Shop customizers typically never use and trying to see what they look like customized. A lot of these bases that I choose are very odd looking because Hasbro, the company behind Littles Pet Shop, has released five different generations over the years and a few of them look pretty bad so there's a lot of Littles Pet Shops that people really avoid even using ever. Honestly, these Littles Pet Shop are like easy to buy, easy to find, nobody wants them. Um, they're kind of just like abandoned homeless children. It's it's actually quite sad. Through the series, we're kind of trying to give them a brand new life, um, show how these bases could be used in two interesting ways. Or maybe some of them are beyond hope, who knows me? Anyway, I would like to introduce the big moment, the movement, the beauty, the queen, the icon. You all know her name. It's Mrs. Flappy. Yes. Oh, no, I missed it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have named this one Mrs. Flappy because, notably, her horrific eyelashes are very large and I feel like once she bats them, like if she's flirting with someone and like batting her eyelashes, she'd probably just like take off like flap, 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 flap. So Mrs. Flappy, everyone, let us inspect what we have to work with today. Okay, I want to get this out of the way first. I'm not like a collector or anything and I believe that these pets are G4, but I have had some people in the comment section say that some of them are G3, so I'm kind of confused. It's either a G3 or a G4 pet. Um, you can definitely, like, educate me more on this if you want. I don't really know very much, but what I do know is this one looks horrendous. <laughs> She's quite, um, a character, I suppose, would be the kindest way to say. I don't really know what they were thinking with the generation. It's just their eyes always look like they are about to murder you. These ears are kind of weird. I don't know if they just look weird because the design looks weird. I don't like the colors, but, um... I, I don't know how I feel about them. They kind of remind me of like maybe a basset hound's ears. Not so much a rabbit. I think the weirdest part is like uh, they kind of stick out. Kind of like pigtails, I suppose, would be a good reference to that. Ponytails, whatever you call them. A few of the pets we've done so far have not looked like that terrible before we painted them. This one I'm kind of like... She's a little bit horrifying. I mean, like, it's okay if you find these ones cute. I just, I find this kind of creepy to look at in a little bit of a way. I can kind of see how someone might like this design because the colors are cohesive. It's just not my cup of rabbit tea. So let's see what we can do with this one. I do want to always try to incorporate some type of sculpting. Technically, this one does not exactly need it. Well, she kind of does. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm thinking for sculpting, I want to try to add like fluffiness to these ears to kind of try to make them look soft and kind of endearing. Um, and also to the tail because the tail is a little bit small. I always think rabbit's tails are probably the most soft and adorable parts of a bunny and this one's just too small. It needs to, needs to be bigger. Again, these ears are kind of weird, but I think if I add clay and kind of make them look fluffy, it will look better, I hope, I think. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I was kind of playing with the idea of cutting them off and like gluing them so that they don't jut out, but I can kind of see how it might look good. I, I won't be able to tell till it's sculpted, guys. We take risks here. I will take the thumbnail photo. See, I remembered everyone. Here it is. You ready? Ready? Boom. Okay, I'm gonna start with the tail. We mix this clay, it's kind of hard. I want to thank you guys so much for like watching these videos. Like they're doing really well and it kind of really motivates me. I'm also in school right now, but like I've been so excited to make videos for the first time in like a while that I just get my schoolwork done so quickly so I can have time for it. You guys are amazing. When I say school, I'm referring to college, by the way. 
She looks so scary in the background. <laughs> Honestly, like, her colors aren't that bad. Like, I actually kind of like her colors. It's just... It's kind of those eyeballs that are kind of getting me, and the ears. The ears and the eyes. The combination of those is kind of scaring me. I have to say, I ordered some very scary bases for future videos. You guys are not going to be ready for what they look like. <laughs> okay, let's start with the tail. Get a big, big wad of clay here. So there's two ways I could do this. Well, see, I could just put this on smoothly, like how it is, kind of, just bigger and paint fur on, but I kind of want to sculpt the fur, like lines of fur. I think that will look nice. I think for the actual body bit, I'll paint the fur. I can't be bothered to cut this off, so I'm just gonna... I am just going to sculpt on top of it. This tool is practically like a character on my channel at this point. It needs a name. Mr. Pointy Tool. You're always there for me. You know what's a good soundtrack is Ice Age. I was listening to it while I was studying and I was like, wow, this music is so good. And then I was like, oh, John Powell did it, duh. He's the person behind a How to Turn Your Dragon theme, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, he's, he's done a lot, so he's probably, you probably recognize the name, but if you don't, very good composer. It's kind of hard to sculpt with these ears in the way. Eh. I'm just trying to get a general shape right now. Okay, we got a chunky tail here, perfect shape. Looking very fluffy, let's add some fur lines. I think I'm gonna remove her head for sculpting the ears just because it's kind of a narrow surface to work under. Last time I removed the head for the frog, that kind of went bad, but I'm thinking because I'm not doing sculpting on her face, it'll be fine this time. Can you imagine if, like, I turn this into a spider because I'm kind of seeing it? The new Star Wars movie looks good. Okay, so what I'm thinking is fluffiness all around, basically. I'm gonna try to contain it to kind of look like inside ear fluff here, but mostly it's kind of like this, just on the ear to create some texture. I'm particularly offended by this custom because my childhood stuffed animal was a bunny. Actually, I should show you. This is my childhood stuffed animal. She doesn't have a name or anything, but it's so cute. It's like the bunny I had in my crib. You know when people ask you the question, if you could save anything from your house in a fire, what would it be? For like objects wise, I think that bunny would be like top priority for me. What's your guys' childhood stuffed animal and its name, if it has a name? Oh, these new paintbrushes suck. Because I like to paint with like the ends. Not not paint. No, that makes no sense. I like to sculpt with the end of these paintbrushes, but these are too chunky. I guess I'll just... I still have this paintbrush, so it's fine. I went to the inside first, uh, and then the outside. This is definitely one of the more difficult to reach sculpting things I've done in a while. Like, of course I can move the head, but it's kind of hard to grab it without ruining it. Okay. That's kind of cute. Wait, do you think I should add it to the outside? Because I like the contrast, kind of, of the fluffy inside and the smooth outside. Whatever, let's just do the other side. We'll figure it out. I actually want to try to get the uh, fluffiness on this part of the ear too, because I, I kind of skipped it on this one. Might look nicer. I mean, if I got if I can bend it anyway, does it really matter? Ooh, this is gonna be difficult to get the hair texture in this crevice. Oh, I know another good one. Childhood TV show. I used to watch Little Bear. Um, I love that show. It's so cute. Uh, Peter Rabbit. But not just Peter Rabbit, just the Beatrix, po Beatrix Potter animations. That's probably why I love bunnies so much. Or for comics, we used to read Calvin and Hobbes. I still have all my Calvin and Hobbes books. They are a humongous collection. By the way, sorry if you hear weird breathing noises in the background, it's my dog, Daphne. Daphne. Miss Daphne. 
Okay, so here's what she looks like um, with the new ears. I think I figured it out. I want to do like hair on the outside, kind of like Vincent actually. So I didn't actually like sculpt tiny little lines in the hair. I just made big chunks of hair and kind of layered them on top of each other. It's a, it's a good look. I think it'll fit this one. So I'm gonna do that just so that um, the inside and the outside don't look identical. Okay, now I'm just gonna do the other side. Watch this magic. Wisha! Ta-da! Okay, let's put the body, the head back on the body. Hopefully with no casualties. <laughs> Mrs. Flappy, come on, be reasonable. <laughs> Ugh, okay, there we go, perfect. Okay, so sometimes when I want the clay to be extra strong, I like to add super glue, kind of like a neat trick. I don't know if most people do this, but I think I'm just gonna add it to the outside layer, just because it kind of sticks out. Sometimes this stuff can break. Um, I'm trying to keep it pretty thin. I don't think I'll add it to the inside layer because it'll probably fill in the hair gaps, if that makes sense. And this is basically like my uh, routine. If I ever make customs, like co commission customs or anything, or like really expensive customs because the last thing I want to happen is for the custom to break. I think Mod Podge also works for this, but this is just obviously stronger. Okay, that's one ear. Now I'm just gonna make sure I don't touch it so I don't stick my fingers to this LPS. Mrs. Flappy would be going everywhere with me. <laughs> that would be kind of hard to explain. I'm mostly just making sure it touches the tips of the clay. Because that's the part I notice breaks the most. Oh, oh, that, that was too much. Too much. <laughs> okay, I did like bare minimum mixing, but it's probably gonna be fine anyway because it's gonna be the first coat, and then we're gonna go back in with more coats. So we can kind of refine the color as we go along. Finally covering these crazy eyes. <laughs> Okay guys, she's done. I hope you like her. I spent a really long time. Um, I really like the cut, the base coat color. I really like how the colors came out. <laughs> Just kidding. Can you imagine if I posted that? Okay. <laughs> I still don't know how I feel about these ears. I really am just gonna have to see this painted. It's really hard to envision like how this will look when it's painted. Just because the eyes are just so crazy. She looks like a psycho ex-girlfriend. I'm not going to go out of my way to paint the inside of the ears because I'm planning on painting that pink. So I don't really want a darker color on anyway. And that also applies to the tail. Oh no, oh, got some black in my papers. Whoops, no big deal. Since I am painting her like natural tones, that's really not a big deal at all. I'm gonna do some white around her eyes. Actually, I wasn't prepared for how much her eyeballs would stick out. We need to get rid of those. Neutralize it. She's starting to remind me of a Dr. Seuss character with these crazy ears. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing that's probably gonna be good. Okay, let's do the second coat. These ears are still kind of, I don't know, for me. Like, I don't know. Maybe they'll be playful and fun once it's painted, I'm not sure. Okay, I think maybe one more coat, probably. I know this base coat doesn't look perfect, but that's intentional. Um, I'm gonna be painting on every single little hair. Uh, I know that sounds like a headache, but it's actually very relaxing, in my opinion. I'm gonna start with the colors around the eyes. Um, so it's like light colors. This is a little bit darker right here, so I'm probably gonna like leave it. This brush is new, so I hope I like it. I think when you get it wet, it creates a very fine point. So hopefully it works. Okay, a little test on the nose. Look, he's got a little mustache. <laughs> You 
know, it's like a business idea. Is like, if you're balding, I can do this to your head. You're welcome. No one steal it. Copyright me. What's a little bit difficult about this process is you have to kind of think about the way that the hair grows. Because you're basically painting the growth of the hair. You can't just go any direction. You gotta follow the curves and lines naturally. Kind of reminds me of her eyelashes. <laughs> I know you're under their eyes. I may have covered you with paint, but I can still feel your presence. So this is just like the base layer. I'm gonna be doing stuff on top of it, so... If it looks a little bit wonky, it's not that big of a deal. I'm basically just trying to establish like where the hair's flowing, the direction it's going. I can modify colors after I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna be switching to a larger brush now that we've gotten like the facial area. Um, near the face, I want the hairs to be smaller, but as you like branch out to the back, the ears, the hairs can be larger. I think it'll look more natural. Also save me some time. Okay, so I'm just gonna be doing this all over the body. I think I will do a skip since I'm just kind of repeating the same brush stroke, I'll come back and we'll work on like the actual details. You see that? It's nighttime. I hope this thing doesn't murder me. I had to stop painting because I was getting traumatized at looking at these ears. I just could not decide if I hated them or if they are okay. And I'm still not certain. I can still see those huge eyelashes. I'm terrified. It's very hairy. Um, still doesn't look like I don't know. I'm not sure if it's gonna look good. I'm not quite certain if this one's gonna turn out how I want. I was today years old when I realized that these pets are from generation three, not generation four. I got wrong information. So yes, I'll be referring to these as generation three from now on. I can't stop looking at these ears. I don't know if they're good or not. What do I do? I had the thought to just chop them off, but I don't know. Maybe it's like the bowling ball head's getting me too. I just, I don't know. Oh, It's kind of looking like a Five Nights at Freddy's character right now, so it's kind of scaring me. <laughs> I am in a battlefield right now for you. I hope you appreciate it. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. The walls are closing in. Is there still hope to make this one cute? Hey, I said I'd paint it. I didn't say I'd succeed. Also, this like um, brush I have, since it's new, I'm just not used to using it. So it's really hard to get those like tiny lines I really like to do with this method. Because I've done this before in the Cheshire Cat and it looks so good. Everyone's gonna roast me. You know, I, I can already feel it. I can sense it. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I couldn't, I didn't know it could get uglier. Maybe, maybe there's hope. I won't give up. I refuse to give up. Um, okay. We're gonna say that looks okay. Maybe I'll just stay up all night until I paint this perfectly. I'll lose all my sanity trying to fix this little pet shop. It's the ears, isn't it? I don't know. <sighs> Something is activating my flight or flight reflexes. The bunny in the photo looks so cute. This one, I don't know about this one. <laughs> I'm going to paint the white tooth. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should have picked one of the other bunny patterns. Beautiful. I don't know. The eyes are kind of scaring me too. Oh no. Oh, 
Oh, okay, okay, I can kind of roll with this. It is reminding me of a Dr. Seuss character, which is kind of endearing, but that's all it really's got going for it. Is it the ears? The ears. So I could cut the ears and just like glue these flat bits on. Maybe it would look nicer. Okay, so the ears were really bothering me. I didn't like how they sticked out so much, so I changed it. I, uh, in a fit of rage, I grabbed my scissors and I um, snipped them off. So here's what I did. Um, I think it's an improvement, honestly. I showed my friend um, and she said it looked cute, so I'm just going off of her. I mean, at this point, anything that was not what it was before is better. I just think them sticking out looked really weird. You can still see the inside of the ears like fluffy, it's just more visible towards the back. I kind of angled them this way because I thought it might look a little bit cuter. Um, the top part is clay that has not been painted yet. We're gonna move him back so we don't get paint on him. Okay, here's what I got. Let's paint her toe beans. Let's do it. I want her nose to be that pink as well. Nothing cuter than a little pink nose. I think it's about time we paint this fluffy tail. It's time to work on her eyes. I don't know if this will make her come together completely. I'm still traumatized from those ears. I can't unsee them. It's kind of like broken my perception. I can't tell if she's ugly or cute or not, I don't even know. Doesn't matter which custom I do, eyeballs are the most satisfying thing to paint. <laughs> All done! <laughs> Just kidding. I kind of like when uh, customs have like this kind of monochrome, like one color throughout. Oh, that reminds me so much of like an owl's eye. Still kind of reminding me of a dinky little Dr. Seuss character. This one's definitely gonna need some big eye shine, <laughs> like I did with the fish, to try to amp up the cuteness. She's gonna need all the help she can get. I'm hoping the eyes tie everything together because eyes can really actually make or break a custom because that's kind of the thing people look at first or like for expression. Oh, you know what this is reminding me of? I'm getting a hint of where the wild things are. Oh, that's very blurry, I'm sorry. Out of focus is not doing me any favors. <laughs> Why is every part of this custom cursed? Now I don't like these eyes. I think I'm gonna darken them. Maybe that'll help. They look too like crazy looking. Maybe they're just like too, too much color. Oh, that helped so much. That helped infinitely more. This is like the world's hardest coloring book. Stay inside the lines, Hello Studios. Let- oh! Oh! Oh my god! Such an idiot! Ah! Panic! Okay. No, 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 no. Water! Water! We need water over here! Oh my gosh. It's chaos. It is chaos. Okay, let's try that again. Um, with less messing up the paint I just spent hours doing. Hmm, how big of eye shines is too big? That's the real question. Kind of like the placement of that one better. Hmm. That's the nice thing about painting on black is you can easily fix it. Boo. You have just witnessed a time skip. I got really busy with my college work and I had to put down this project for a week or so. Um, so now I'm back with facing the conundrum of the bunny in comparison to schoolwork. This is a welcome problem in my life. How to fix the bunny. Okay, now that I'm looking at it like from fresh eyes, I actually kind of like it. 
Um, I actually kind of like the hair, like it kind of looks fluffy to me. It looks like I could pet this little, little bunny. She's so fluffy, let me think, with the eye shines. Are you an eye shines person or a no eye shines? Miss Flappy, which one do you prefer? Okay, so I don't know if this will be controversial, but I actually kind of like it without the eye shine. I think it just kind of suits the realistic aspect of this custom more. The eye shine is more of a cartoonistic feature. I mean, as you can see, I just kind of like the no eye shines look. The eye shine in the little sweatshop shop is meant to emulate um, what is happening on this little sweatshop shop right here, where the shiny coat um, reflects light. So that's just in painted form. So it will still be like eye shiny, just it won't be painted, I suppose. And I kind of prefer that. This custom's basically done, like almost finished. But I am wearing white clothing, so hopefully I don't get any black paint on my clothing. Just like that, it's gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a no eye shine. I think that looks better. Now that I have fresh eyes. But now that that's taken care of, um, all that's left is the finishing, which is going to be priming it, uh, sealing it with Mr. Super Clear, which is kind of a toxic chemical that is a good, it's a good sealant. A lot of doll customizers use it and it's pretty much invisible, but I'm going to be using it outside because, again, it's toxic. Um, I did not mention this last time, uh, make sure to wear a mask while you're using it, a respiratory mask, it's very important since it is cancer inducing. <laughs> fun, fun and crafts with Hello Studios. And um, after I do that sealant layer, we will be glossing and then Mrs. Flappy will be on her way to flap away. You know what, I'm kind of looking at her and she would look so cute, like photographed in some sort of greenery. Are you ready for the big reveal? May I present Miss Flappy come forth and enter the stage. <laughs> After many hours of pain and suffering, we have done it, I think. Have we? This one is kind of a conundrum custom. I can't tell if I like it or not. I think maybe a different pattern might have looked like better. I am very happy we uh, removed the eye shines. I think she looks a lot better now. Also, the ears being snipped off. That was definitely a good choice. I am i didn't really like them before, just felt like it looked weird. This was quite the journey to get here. The hair itself, I was kind of frustrated with because I didn't have the correct brush. So the hair strokes are a little bit bigger than I would want them to be. Like thinking back to the original base, I think this is like pretty, pretty okay considering everything, considering how it looked before. <laughs> so what do you think? Did I do her justice? Do you not like it? You can definitely be honest. I don't mind either way. I think this style would be very um, dependent on the person if you like it or not. I think the most important question is, is she improved? What do you think? Artists are always going to be critical of their own work. That is, that is the woe of being an artist. Hope you enjoyed my process today, uh, making this bunny, Mrs. Flappy. I'll keep making these videos. What will we do next? Down the line of spooky LPS trying to make them look better. And I will see you in the next creation project where we will create destruction. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye, bye, -bye. bye.